this computer. Thank you very much for reminding me about it. <laughs> okay, uh, let's talk about generics. Before generics, before Java version 5, we could have the following code. Uh, like we have a array list uh, class, which is just a list, just a container of any uh, object. So uh, array list class is a library class and uh, it's common among all the programs. So it doesn't know about our concrete classes that we are going to put into this list, say manager or employee. This is our code as users of uh, Java library. So we are creating these managers and employees. We are creating this array list and we adding these uh, managers to, to, to array list. And uh, uh, since add method can add literally any object to, to the container, to the list, we can add uh, something, something wrong. For example, cleaner or some inferior employee. And uh, this is uh, supposed to be a list of managers because we named it list managers. But we are adding cleaner to, to this list. And this is actually a bug. This is where we have a bug in our code. We shouldn't have added uh, cleaner to list of managers. But compiler compiles this code because cleaner is an object. We can add any object to list. And it's OK uh, from the point of view of compiler. And then we are getting uh, managers out of this list. Since array list is a Gen generic class, it's a library class, and uh, we can get, uh, we can put something to it, and we can get something out of it. So we can just uh, get a second element, starting from zero, of course, uh, second element of the list. And before Java 5, uh, this is a cast to object because list doesn't know about uh, its elements. So we have to manually cast this element to manager. We are expecting manager here, but by mistake, we put it uh, cleaner here. So uh, at this point, during execution, not in compile time, but in execution time, we will get an error. We will get a runtime exception that uh, uh, some employee cleaner cannot be cast to manager because it's actually a different class. And uh, what's bad about it? There are the first thing uh, which is bad is that uh, we have exception in runtime, right? Uh, we, it would be far, far better if we were able to catch this bug in design time and compilation that this code won't compile. And the bad thing about this exception is that it occurred too late uh, because actually we get runtime exception here, but the actual mistake in the code is here. And it you already understand that it can be some very different Java, uh, Java class or Java file somewhere deep in your code. And it's uh, very difficult to debug such uh, exceptions because we have a damaged uh, list and we don't know what damaged it because it's not enough from just from exception to understand which code uh, caused the adding cleaner to the list of managers. Uh, remember uh, pre in previous uh, lesson, I told you uh, throw early catch late. And in this, in this example, exception is uh, thrown too late to debug. So it's a bad situation and something can be done about it. And language designers, uh, they manage to, uh, to, find, uh, to find a nice solution. So this, this is my uh, <laughs> favorite, favorite picture, uh, favorite comic about uh, compile time error versus runtime error. This is literally what we have uh, here because in runtime it's too late to, to, to debug and it's uh, very hard to debug such a mistake. So it's better to uh, filter out such mistakes in compile time. And that's what uh, generics are about. It's a very important, it's a crucial feature of uh, Java language and uh, of every language uh, which, support, uh, which supports exceptions. Uh, exceptions, not exceptions, generics. Uh, so now, in modern versions of Java, we uh, uh, write code like this. Uh, we are defining a list, not, not just raw list, just a generic list, but list of manager in this triangular brackets. Right? Like uh, it's not just list, it's list of manager. And this is a, a type called type parameter. 
and uh, it allows us to uh, to use it follow the following way uh, since it's list of manager now compiler understands that this list might contain only managers only instances of managers so we can add manager CEO we can add another manager called CTO and uh, if we add, add cleaner here this code won't just won't compile because compiler will tell us will tell us that uh, you are trying to add cleaner which is employee not manager to to the list that can contain only managers and when we are getting values from this list like managers get uh, one get first element starting from zero so this is going to be cto of course uh, compiler already knows that all the managers are in the list so we can write this code without explicit typecasting like we used to do before Java version 5. So this is a nice feature. And uh, I think that if you ever tried to, to do your homework, uh, you already uh, met these uh, generic classes like array lists and, and so on. So uh, using, uh, using generics is a simple thing. Actually, the more tricky thing is to write your own generic classes. And I'm going to tell <laughs> from now on, I'm, I'm going to tell you about how to do this correctly. Uh, uh, in order how to do this correctly, you need to understand some, uh, some low level details. Unfortunately, or fortunately, and this is why this uh, lecture is going to be, uh, well, a bit low level and uh, hard. So on, on a syntax level, uh, it's uh, also easy to define our own parameterized class. For example, we, uh, we want to, def to de define a pair of something. So we just uh, write class, uh, class pair, and then we're using this triangle brackets, and then we uh, put T here. And T is supposed to be our type parameter, our type parameter. And this T, we can utilize in the class body. For example, uh, it's pair of something, of something of type T. So the first element of pair and second element of pair is going to have type T. We don't know which type our users will substitute uh, the correct type, but we can refer to type T here. And uh, um, also we can uh, write a constructor for this um, class like this one, like uh, T first, T second, so that only uh, if we parameterize pair with manager, for example, only managers can be put here as first and second element. And uh, we can also use T as return type. So it's just like we defined this T as a type or class or interface, but without actual definition. It's like a parameter with, which will be substituted when you, you are going to create this class. So unlike a parameter of method, it's a type parameter, something new, some new concept. Uh, so when we defined our pair here like this, we can use it quite easily. You can just uh, say pair of string and you pair John and Mary. So uh, this code will compile because compiler understands that this is going to be a pair of strings and we are passing two strings into its uh, constructor and it's okay for compiler. And then uh, we're getting, it's equivalent to defining, like we just uh, search and replace T with string, for example, right? So that our actual get first and get second will return string, our set first and second will uh, um, ask us to provide string. So it's like we copied this code and uh, pasted in and just replaced T with string. Actually, the code is not copied. We are always reusing the same code, but it works like this. So it's a very powerful, uh, powerful language facility, actually. Uh, besides generic classes, we also have generic methods in Java language. And uh, mm, uh, look at this one. Uh, we are going to write a method which uh, accepts uh, some uh, some variable number of arguments uh, of items. And this method should return a random element out of this one. Say, if, we, uh, if we're providing, say, A, B, C, 
this method uh, should return some random string a, b, and c are strings. So it's going to return us a string, uh, a random element. And uh, it's going to be string s uh, equals get random elements of a, b, c. And uh, we are providing uh, CO, CTO, and CFO. Uh, CFO. It's, uh, they are all managers of some organization. And we are going to get some random manager. So this, uh, this method here uh, should, uh, return, uh, should return as manager. And uh, see how it works. It works even simpler than with uh, ge uh, generic classes because we are not providing uh, explicitly any type here after uh, the method, because this type is cal calculated automatically. It's the example of uh, what is called the type inference, where uh, um, compiler automatically calculates the correct type. Uh, uh, see, we, if we defined uh, this uh, method in this way, so we have uh, T in triangular brackets uh, before, before actual method definition. Uh, here T is a type parameter. So we are using this T as return type. So we're returning T, but we don't know what, what this T is about. And when we have uh, some uh, T var arcs here, like T items, we also don't know actual type of T, but it doesn't matter for us. What's <coughs> what matters for us is just, we have these items, we are going to select a random one. So we're selecting random one uh, using this code, just uh, we're producing some random number from zero to the length of items element, uh, uh, array. And then we're just returning an element, which is going to be of type T. We, it, it doesn't matter for us, be it string, a manager, a number, whatever, it doesn't matter for this, method, it only matters that it should return one of them and its type should be uh, the type of all of them. So, and here we have this, uh, uh, this method. Uh, and uh, uh, what's, uh, what's different that at no stage we are going to, uh, to provide actual type argument here. So we're not providing type argument, it's inferred from uh, the types of these uh, uh, arguments of this function through type inference. So yes, we please remember, we have uh, generic uh, classes, generic types, and we have generic methods in Java. Uh, so yeah, another, another example of uh, using of uh, generic methods. Uh, instead of using var arcs here, we can uh, ask uh, to provide list of uh, items, and we can use T here like, uh, list of t and return t here. So it's uh, just all that we know is that uh, we are returning one of these elements and its type is going to be the type of elements of list. And it doesn't matter for, uh, for the implementation of this method what actual type it is. So we are just uh, generically programming, like we are programming generic methods that can be used in uh, different context and thus the name generics. So uh, intermediate conclu conclusions. Uh, using parameterized classes is simple. We just uh, specify parameters, say manager, uh, list of manager, it's a typo uh, like this. So the, the, correct, uh, the correct example is like this. And uh, uh, using parameterized methods is even simpler because we don't uh, we don't need uh, actually to to provide any of uh, uh, types for generics in most of the cases. In some cases we should provide, but let's skip it for now. Uh, in most of the cases, type inference work for us. Uh, but writing your own parameterized classes and methods are a more complex task, and we are going to cover it uh, later. Uh, Another, another feature of uh, generics is the so-called bound types, bounded types. Uh, uh, in this example, it actually doesn't matter what T is, right? So it might be any object, we're just getting random, uh, random element of this list. So it doesn't matter what's inside the list. But uh, sometimes you just 
need to know what's inside the list, at least at, uh, uh, at least uh, to some basic class, for example. We need to know that uh, this T actually not an object, or some random object, but a T which is person or subtype of person. So we are writing it like this, T extends person. So we are defining this T. If we're not uh, putting any extends here, then T might, must be any, it can be a, just any type. But we are, if we are putting T extends person, then we uh, should provide uh, only the type that actually extends person. And if we are using such declaration, such declaration, we can utilize our knowledge that T actually extends person. Uh, for example, uh, in this example, we are getting a list of uh, persons. It might be lists of managers, list of employees, list of I don't know who, but students. But uh, let's assume that both uh, managers, employees, and students, they all extend uh, uh, person. And in person class or in person interface, we have a method get name. Uh, right, and this uh, get name returns string. So if we are uh, getting random person name, we can put it right like this. We are getting list t of items. We know that t extends person. So at this uh, at this stage, we can put not t result here, but person result here because uh, t extends person. So t can be safely cast to person. And thus, result is person or, or subtype of person. We can utilize method of type person and uh, such as get name, so that we can uh, write uh, get random person name for generic method, uh, which accepts a list of t where t is any class. It, it might be person, but it might be also any class that extends person. Besides bounded types, we have another very interesting feature, which is called intersection types. Uh, because we, we can uh, bound our types not only to, to one type, for example, but to intersection of types. And uh, we are using ampersand here to, to produce this intersection. For example, mm, uh, if we have a basic class called person, and we have a basic interface called payable. Payable interface it contains a get month payment. Uh, so uh, for example, uh, retiree and employee, they are persons in our organization, and we are going to pay them. So they also, uh, so they also implement this payable interface, right? So we are paying to, to our retires and we are uh, paying to our employees some amount of money monthly. Uh, but uh, we also have visitors to our organization and they are just visitors. We are not going to pay them. So visitor doesn't implement payable interface. Uh, but we want uh, to, to write a method that gets random name and payment out of elements which are going to both extend person and implement payable. And in order to, to write this, we're writing it like T extends person and payable. We don't have, uh, so, so that, mm, sorry, so that any actual type which is both uh, extends person and implements payable will do as an argument for such uh, for such method. But visitor won't do because it doesn't implement payable. But a retiree and employee, they will do. And uh, knowing that it extends person, we can get name, right? Like this. And knowing that it's uh, going to imp implement pay payable also, it's, we are going to use uh, uh, payable. Uh, payables in uh, payables method like uh, get payment and uh, look what we have here we have uh, wh what we have here for type t for type t we have just t we don't have actual type like person and payable you cannot write in java 
person and payable my uh, variable equals this and this. There's just no no such uh, such feature, such facility in Java language. But we can use it uh, here as a, a type parameter of a generic function. I have chat uh, a message in chat. What's the difference between an interface and class in this context? Uh, well, actually, no difference because all of them are classes. It's just an example. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. What I'm talking. All of them are types. Interfaces and classes are types in general in Java. So in this example, uh, in this example, it can be uh, two interfaces, for example, but it can't be two classes because, uh, as we know, uh, we can inherit from one class only. But we can implement as uh, many interfaces as we like. So I can uh, just uh, this picture can be redrawn this way. This can be interface. This can be dashed line, and uh, it it uh, will work. All all, um, uh, all that I told you before will just work. So this can be an interface in our example, but this can be a class because we cannot uh, inherit from two classes. So actually, when talking about bounded types, uh, strictly speaking, uh, what's put here is types, not, uh, not classes or interfaces. This might be classes, this might be interfaces. The only uh, restriction here that in uh, this uh, list, uh, there can be only one class because it doesn't make sense to inherit from more than one class in Java. If you put two classes here, the code won't compile because Java compiler knows it, it's just impossible for, for any object to inherit two classes. So this code won't compile. But if you say put one class and 100 interfaces, it will compile. If you just put 101 interface here, it will compile. So Kingsley, thanks you for, for the question. It clarifies, uh, yes, I'm talking about actually types. And when I'm talking about classes, it's just for, for example. Okay, let's, let's move on. Uh, if it's clear, by the way, please somebody unmute and say if it's clear or if you are completely confused at this point, because uh, what I'm going to talk about later is Bit more confusing yeah Vlad yeah it's understandable but uh, as in all code world uh, like for me it's easier to use it in some example and then I uh, okay this is so I will find some some tasks or like something for using it yeah yeah I life. understand yeah so you you would like to practice uh, to practice it yourself yes sorry <laughs> we don't have time to practice all the code examples yeah, yeah, yeah. To you, it's like yes, like like me or like other people understand. But like, if they want to understand better, they need like practice and. Uh... Yeah, yeah, you'd you'd better uh, maybe yeah, just copy and paste it and try to try to compile this code. Yes, actually, yeah. But we have lots of examples, so I, I just don't have time to to show it, you all of them in in compiler. So, uh, so we uh, so far it's all about uh, syntax syntax part. Uh, so we have these type parameters. Uh, we can use uh, uh, type parameters in uh, classes and in methods. And there are also bounded types and intersection types. And intersection is just uh, most generic form of bounded type. So we can use ampersand, ampersand to, uh, to list all, all the bounds for our uh, type. And uh, here is some historical historical notes that uh, generics in Java, they appeared in Java version five. And before, before Java version five, uh, there, there were no generics in the language. And actually uh, generics in languages, they were introduced somewhere in the beginning of 21st century, somewhere in 2020. And I don't know which was the first language, maybe it was C++, but just, I just don't know. So let's let's not uh, talk <laughs> about things that i'm not sure of but uh java was uh, one of the first languages that implemented generics but when they implemented generics they had to find a way to preserve backwards compatibility so that the code that was uh, that had been already written before java 5 should 
uh, had work uh, on Java 5. So uh, they had to find out the way how to preserve backwards compatibility. So they found a way uh, of implementation. And uh, this, uh, the solution was type erasure. I'm going to, to tell you about type erasure now. And type erasure, damn it, because uh, type erasure is one of the ways uh, of implementing generics in a programming language. And it brings some, um, some restrictions, some possibilities on, on the one hand. On the other hand, it uh, brings some restrictions, some very strong restrictions. And uh, we have generics in Java 5 implemented through type erasure. And uh, we're just living with it. In, uh, in uh, C-sharp language, for example, they have uh, so-called reified generics. It's another way to implement generics. But uh, it's C-sharp. It's another language. It's another ecosystem. In uh, Java, we have generics imp uh, uh, implemented through type erasure. So we have to understand how type erasure works and uh, so that we can understand the possibilities and restrictions of type erasure. So now we are going to talk about what type erasure is. Actually, generics in Java is not a language feature. Uh, sorry, it's not a platform feature, but it's just a language feature. When we have uh, this uh, class, our pair of T class that we can write ourselves, when we compile it to bytecode, the bytecode itself doesn't know anything about generics. In bytecode, it's going to look like a simple raw pair class without any type uh, argument so that uh, we are storing objects here, we're returning objects here. So uh, what's being done uh, on the compiler part? The compiler mm, is responsible for checking that you are going to, to use this pair of T correctly. Like if you are uh, de declared pair of uh, manager, then compiler checks and it won't compile if you are going to put a cleaner to pair of managers. Like, but, but when we compiled it to bytecode, bytecode in runtime doesn't know anything about generics. So uh, from the point of view of bytecode, it's just pair of object. And uh, of course it makes sense because our algorithms are written in such a way that they hear, we don't know what actual T is this. So it can be object. So that we have only one uh, class file for pair still. And this class file with bytecode can be reused for any instance of pair with any uh, generic argument. So this is a uh, type erasure actually. When we're compiling uh, this source code, this type parameter is erased and uh, we are using just object here. Or if we are using bounded, uh, a bounded type, then we are erasing it uh, to, to its uh, bound. So if we are knowing that T extends employee, then uh, on bytecode level, we can know, we can know that uh, it's at least employee. It might be say manager or programmer or whoever, but uh, it must be employee. So we are erasing it to some, uh, to, to the bound. Uh, uh, question for you. What do you think if we are using, uh, if we are using intersection types here? If we are using T extends employee and payable, uh, how, it's, uh, how the compiled code is, is going to look like? Your opinion. Vlad, do you, what do you think? So uh, I think like if uh, mm, uh, we like extend our class, so the, our generic uh, also will be like extended uh, and uh, will like um, inherit it. No, no, I no, guess. This, uh, see, see here, pair T extends employee, right? So T is parameter. If we, if it's not, um, if it's not bounded, we are just erasing uh, T, so we just replace it with object. Like we, we don't it, okay. know the type of T. Here we know that T is employee at least, right? So we're just replacing T with employee. 
<laughs> the yes. question is, what do you think? What do you think? You, you cannot know what actually happens, but uh, I just wonder, what do you think? Uh, what, imagine you are, Java, uh, you are Java engineer, the folk who, are, who is going to, to write Java itself. And uh, we have a language, in language specification, we have uh, the possibility to write T extends employee and payable. What uh, should we put here? What type? Yeah, Any we, cannot, we, we cannot put like all the classes that. Yeah, we cannot put. We cannot because, just because yeah. it will be just because it will be just like too big and uh, not not too big. We just uh, we just don't have such type in Java as employee and payable. It's not type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we, we just cannot. And uh, we can uh, put only one type here. So what type? How do you think? I think our like class payer, but for those classes, we will create such reference or access to uh, its, uh, its, its, its features, because as you said, we cannot put all of them. We cannot just put, we cannot just uh, put uh, like, or we can put the oldest one, but however, I'm not sure. Oldest one, uh, what do you mean by oldest uh, one? Uh, the like, most uh, generic yeah, one. Yeah, 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 the most generic one, like. But uh, in my example, uh, payable is not, uh, and, and person are not related. Uh, payable is not uh, more generic or less generic than, pe than person. Person is not uh, implementing payable. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, mm. so, so, but you, 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 you are right in, uh, that we have to choose only one. And yeah, uh, only let, one. let me just tell you, it chooses uh, the first one in the list. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> It just uh, yeah, it just uses the first one in the list. If you put uh, if you put person here, it will choose a person for a type for a race type. If you put uh, payable here, it will use payable. And it's random choice actually. It's it's a random choice. But uh, sometimes strange things happens in runtime, and you must understand that uh, this is because uh, uh, Java virtual machines just uh, chooses uh, the first. Uh, one of the bounded uh, of the intersection types because you just have to cho choose one and it chooses the first one. So it's it's a strange thing, but uh, you just need to implement uh, JVM and that's that's how they do it. Uh, so uh, uh, yeah, in this what's this uh, one is about? Uh, yeah, yeah, and the method calls. Method calls uh, they uh, just uh, a compiler during compile time will uh, will control in compile time that we are going to add uh, correct uh, correct uh, elements here so we can add the CFO, uh, CFO CTO not cleaner if we try to add cleaner it will uh, give us compile time error but in runtime in runtime type control is not needed because everything was checked at compile time so we're actually saving our time. We're just running code faster, and we are relying on the compiler. That compiler already checked, verified the code for us during compilation. It's quite nice. And uh, afterwards, uh, if we are going to get uh, get first body, just like body's uh, pair of managers, if we are going to get first, uh, here typecast is not needed uh, for for writing the code because but compiler adds this uh, implicit typecast here into bytecode so actually uh, this typecast in, is inserted by compiler at, at this uh, stage we are going to verify that uh, this first body is actually a manager and you might ask why do we need to verify? Because we are pretty sure that it's not it's not going to be uh, someone else. And uh, let me show you some, <laughs> some strange things later. Okay, so uh, if we are going to uh, extend uh, some type or uh, some extend some uh, interface, and we are going to parameterize this uh, interface, by the way. So say we have date interval and it extends pair of local date, for example. Uh, in uh, this example, uh, since we are extending pair of local date, our class is not uh, parameterized anymore. 
right? So it's uh, just uh, not parameterized. And uh, our set second method is going to accept only local date because we strictly uh, fixed uh, the, the type. Like it's going to be local date. So our set second method, when we override it, when we implement it, we'll override it, is going to accept only local date. But what's going to, to be on a bytecode level when we are going to compile? If we are compiling it to set second local date second, this is not uh, going to override uh, the base method of pair because base method of pair set, uh, set second is accepting object, not local date. So this is not going to be from the point of view of Java virtual machine, it's not going to be uh, overriding, it's going to be overloading. This is something that you should understand uh, now pretty well because uh, there are lots of uh, questions on in our test in a week. So I hope you're understanding the difference between overriding and overloading. When overriding happens, when overloading happens. In this case, it's going to be overloading. So without uh, some additional uh, stuff from compiler it won't work because it's not overriding the basic method what compiler does it it inserts implicit so-called bridge method which actually overrides set second of uh, of the pair and this set second accepts object and what it does it converts object to local date and it's mm -hmm. going to to call our set second method that we we wrote here so like in our source code, we are putting overwrite annotation here. And uh, for us, it looks like we just overridden the pair of local date here. But uh, at the level of bytecode, uh, this, this method does not, is not overriding anything. Uh, this one bridge method that we actually didn't write, uh, compiler wrote it for us, inserted it automatically. This actually overrides and this uh, delegates all to our set second. Quite complicated, quite tricky thing, but you, uh, I don't expect that you memorize this stuff just right now. It might be too complex for you, but uh, please try to remember one thing. When we are using uh, generics and we are extending something, uh, compiler inserts uh, the stuff called bridge methods. And this bridge method might uh, uh, just prevent you from writing something. Because now, for example, we cannot write our own set second uh, of object method because it will clash with bridge method. So don't be afraid when you uh, just get some message from compiler and this uh, message uh, is telling you something about bridge methods. Uh, you just go to, to the recording of this lesson or just go, to, uh, uh, just go to, to my slides and you will understand what's going on. So uh, short summary, yeah, intermediate summary, how it works. There are no parameterized classes on the level of Java virtual machine or on the level of uh, bytecode. We have uh, only regular classes and methods and it's, uh, it was done uh, for the sake of backwards compatibility with Java, uh, Java versions before five. But Java version five was uh, issued in 2004, if I'm not mistaken. So it was many, many years, 16 years ago, not 16, about 20 years ago. So uh, type parameters are replaced with object or with uh, boundary type. And this boundary type might be quite arbitrary. Yes, as we now understand. And the uh, bridge methods are added, are inserted to preserve polymorphism and the typecast is added as needed. So uh, these uh, four points you must understand now, maybe not uh, some details, you may miss some details, but these four points, I think they are quite clear. So we have just ordinary regular classes and methods in bytecode and we're using some compiler tricks to to work it as expected, so like uh, uh, replacing object with boundary type and uh, adding bridge methods and typecasts. Uh, so uh, in Java language specification, there exists a feature called row type. Uh, for example, if we have a, a generified uh, class list, list of T, 
We can also in I code, we can use it. It will compile, use just list without any uh, generic specification. And this is called using row type instead of parameterized type. But uh, the ability to use row type, it, uh, it's just uh, reserved for backwards compatibility with Java 5. So you should never use row types in your code because you can break your program. Although you can just uh, write it and uh, you will see some warning and you can compile and you can run the code. You, if you have a parameterized type, you should always put parameters in triangular brackets. So uh, uh, look at this example. We have list of manager here. Uh, and uh, then we are using row type, just let it be just list. Just, we just don't want to bother list of what it is. So compiler will compile our code. When, then we are adding something, something wrong to B, say B add manager. If it's list from compiler's point of view, it's going to be list of everything. So any object will do. So we can add a manager. It's a string, not manager object. It's just string. So now we have corrupted list in memory. So we now we have uh, what's called the uh, heap pollution. So we have a, a list of manager, but in, in memory, we have two manager and one string. So when we're going to uh, uh, to write this one, manager ma dot get zero, it's going to compile, it's going to run, but in runtime, we will get class cast exception because uh, a string cannot be cast to manager. So uh, please never use row types. Uh, it's, uh, you can get heap pollution, you can break type systems in Java. Uh, and uh, yeah, another maybe intermediate conclusion is that understanding generics is Java is not about what you can do with them, but it's about what you can't do with them. You cannot do with them uh, because of the implementation, implementation via uh, type erasure. So um, let's discuss what you cannot do with generics because sometimes when novice programmers, they know about generics and they understand how powerful such a feature, oh, generics, I can do everything. I can generalize everything, but actually they cannot. And you must understand uh, what, what are the boundaries. Uh, and uh, the boundaries are defined by type erasure. Because in runtime, you actually don't know the actual type parameter. And uh, for example, uh, you cannot uh, write code like this. You have uh, a variable, you cannot uh, check it for that it's instance of pair of string. You just cannot write this, it just this code just won't compile. Why? Because in runtime, you, you certainly know that it's going to be a pair. But in runtime, you cannot check that it's a pair of string. It's a pair of something. You don't know what in runtime, only in compile time. You can, you can uh, write this check like A instance of pair. And here we have question mark in uh, triangular brackets. And this is all that, that uh, uh, runtime, uh, that Java virtual machine can do for you in runtime. Just check that it's pair, but pair of what? It doesn't know. Uh, so, uh, also, you cannot use primitive types as parameters because uh, all the uh, parameterized classes stuff is about uh, erasing types to object. And uh, int or boolean or float or double or other uh, primitive types, they uh, are not inherited from object. They are not objects at all. So we just Alas, it's impossible to write list of int. It's impossible. It will yield us compilation error. And this is why actually we need these proper classes in the language. Like remember on the previous lesson, I told you about proper classes. And this is actually why we need the proper classes because we want to use them as a generic argument. So you are using list of integer here. And then using auto boxing, you can just integers add 42. And this is like list of integers still work for you as list of integers. But under the hood, you know that for each 42 primitive, you will get a proper object that will take, take occupy some 
place in memory. So it's going to yield you some memory overhead and you must understand uh, this. Uh, so uh, the actual uh, status quo is that that if you uh, need a list of primitives, you are using grouper classes, but it will work well in most of the cases. If your lists are not so huge, it will work and it will work fast. If you still need performance, uh, in uh, you have. Uh, Stand, uh, specialized libraries like fastutil and in fastutil uh, instead of array list of integer you can uh, have interarray list uh, but uh, fastutil is not uh, not a part of standard java library in standard java library they have some uh, uh, some classes uh, adjusted for primitives uh, uh, two lessons later we will talk about streams and instead of stream of integer you can use int stream uh in uh, standard java library instead of stream of double you can use double stream but it's that's a separate class as well as uh interarray list in fast to library is a separate class it's not an array list uh, just rewritten from scratch to use int as a uh, element of uh, of internal array but uh we all expecting uh Project Valhalla and future versions of Java, uh, uh, the thing called specialized generics is expected to be implemented. And maybe when you will be Java professionals, when you will be writing professional code on Java, maybe some years later, uh, you will get uh, in future versions of Java, you will get specialized generics. Uh, this will uh, just, uh, just change uh, type system in Java dramatically. Uh, you we will have the notion of uh, uh, value refer uh, uh, value projection and reference projection reference projection of types. Uh, the type system uh, of the language will be quite different from what uh, we have now. But then, then uh, we will happily use uh, a list of int list of just int uh, uh, in the future versions of Java. But not just now. Now we have to use a uh, list of integer. Okay, what's next? Uh, parameter types cannot be instantiated. I think it's uh, understandable because uh, we cannot just uh, return new T because uh, what what actual co constructor of what class are we going to uh, run here? And just uh, from this context, it's not impossible to know. So compiler will, uh, will throw us a compiler error here. Uh, but uh, we can uh, overcome this difficulty using uh, uh, meta classes and reflection. I will tell you about reflection later in the very, the very last uh, lesson, maybe. Uh, uh, moreover, you cannot instantiate the type parameter array if we have this uh, T to array and we, we just, it just won't compile because uh, in runtime, we don't know what T actually is needed. And another, another question, another problem is that arrays and generics are enemies because arrays uh, were introduced in the first version of uh, Java language and they have a different approach to uh, type checking. And I will tell you later in the second part of the lecture about uh, type checking and arrays and generics. Uh, this one, for example, uh, uh, will not compile uh, because uh, uh, such an array will not have the full type information about its elements. In the first version of Java, in first versions of Java, uh, it was assumed that array have uh, arrays are reified in Java. Arrays in in runtime in run type any array uh, have information about types of its elements. So if we have a list of string of A, array of list of string of A, in runtime, we just know that this is going to be an array of lists, but not array of lists of string. And this is why a Java compiler won't let you to run such code because uh, in runtime, the array will not have the full information. And what does this mean for 
uh, for array not to have uh, full information about its elements. Uh, this means that we can corrupt memory. We can uh, do what's called the heap pollution. Uh, like this, there's an another, let's let's use a sledgehammer, yes, and hammer the values into array, like, uh, let's write this, write this code, uh, like a list of string, let's type cast this to list of string using new list of something, uh, and uh, uh, here we will have list of string array of eight. This line is going to compile because we fooled the compiler here, because this one will not compile, we are just trying to instantiate new array list of string, but this one will compile because we're instantiating just list of uh, something, new list of something, array of lists of something like, and then we are just uh, typecasting it. So Java will allow us to do this. Okay, if you want, let's have a list of string of A, but uh, what next? Next, we uh, can assign this A value to a value of object array of objects. So if uh, A is array of lists of strings, then A is array of objects, right? So what's wrong? It's okay, lists are objects, so we can assign array of lists to, list, uh, to array of objects. Okay, and uh, what next? Uh, then we just uh, assign, uh, to uh, object array, uh, a list of strings of one string, just one string full, just have uh, <clears throat> arrays as list uh, full will give us, uh, will yield us a list of string. So uh, this is the correct first element of uh, this object array. It's actually a list of strings that will consist of only one string, one string full. But uh, on the second line, we'll do something bad. We'll just uh, use list of manager, one manager here, and uh, we will just cast it to list of manager. And we also assign it to uh, uh, as a second value or first value to object array. Uh, this uh, will compile. Because object array is just array of objects and uh, list of manager is an object. And uh, it will run uh, because in runtime, when we assign values to such uh, an array, it will uh, check, check the type. But uh, what's it going to, to check actually? It's going to check uh, the type that was assigned during creation. Where did we create this uh, array? Here, it's created as a, a array of lists. And it will, uh, this code will actually run without error because it's an array of lists and we're assigning list here, but it's not list of string as we expected, it's list of manager. So it's a list that consists single manager. So now we have an array. The first element is list of single list. The second element is a list of single manager. And here in variable, in a variable, we have list of string, array of list of string. We're expecting array of list of string. And if we are getting such string as a of one gets zero, we'll have runtime error here because we just broken our type system. Because we fooled our type system, uh, compiler expects that it's going to be, man uh, uh, sorry, compiler expects that it's going to be string because a is list of string. So it's just uh, what is called heap pollution. Uh, so yes, it's possible to fool a type checking system in Java. Unfortunately, this is because of uh, this is because of just uh, Java evolved evolutionary. Uh, just uh, first we had arrays and then we had generics. If we had generics uh, from the very first version, then we wouldn't have this row types. Then we wouldn't have this uh, arrays. Maybe we, but uh, uh, we have what we have. It just. Uh, consequence of uh, uh, evolutionary growth of uh, 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 evolutionary development of the language itself. So we must understand uh, our restrictions. We will always have restrictions in the language. Uh, another, another example, I just won't elaborate on it. 
uh, that we have var arcs and var arcs is uh, still an array because uh, uh, we are using var arcs uh, method uh, as an array so we can uh, uh, we can have uh, heat pollution in similar way with var arcs uh, so this is why uh, when we are declaring some uh, dangerous method like uh, where of type uh, uh, of some type uh, sorry uh, of some parameterized types where of some parameterized types uh, then uh, java compiler will give us warning about unchecked generics array creation for var arc parameter and you must understand that it's related uh, with the fact that generics and arrays are enemies in Java type system, they are enemies. But uh, you can do it like this. You can just put safe var arcs annotation uh, for your method and it will compile without warnings. And just, uh, you just uh, say by putting safe var arcs annotation uh, on your method, you just tell to, to compiler, I solemnly promise I will not do heap pollution. I will not do bad things with, uh, with uh, this array, uh, bad things like this one with array. So I just promise you, so please don't give me warning. Please uh, just uh, silently compile this. You see, it's like, uh, don't know what, what's called Castilian Russian. It's just like, I don't know <laughs> uh, some quick fix, quick and dirty fix, but uh, this is what we have in Java language. In any language, no exceptions. Any language. If you if you are uh, studying any language quite deep, you will find uh, such things in any la language because all the languages they are developing evolutionary. So uh, some strange things uh, are inevitably uh, happening in languages. So you must understand it's just real, real world engineering with some workarounds, with some uh, trade-offs and workarounds. Okay, uh, uh, what else you cannot parameterize? Uh, you cannot parameterize exceptions. Exceptions are special, uh, special types in language, and uh, because we are checking types of exception when we are catching them, like we are catching uh, I O exception. That's why we need to know in runtime the full type information. If exception is going to be parameterized, then we're losing some type information in runtime. So exception cannot be parameterized. Anonymous classes cannot be parameterized because they are instantiated in place and thus it cannot be reused with uh, different type parameters. And enums, enums also cannot be parameterized. And also parameters cannot be used in static context. I think it's uh, clear for you now because uh, if we just have container T and uh, static uh, variable cannot be of type T because uh, uh, we may use a uh, static container with different type parameters for foo, for bar and what uh, this T is going to be. So this code just will not compile because you just have to choose one type for, for, for this variable. And you cannot implement different parameterizations of the same interface in one class. That's because bridge uh, methods. I will, to save time, I will not elaborate on this, but just please remember there is also such, such restriction. Okay, all right. Uh, we are somewhere in two thirds of this difficult lecture. Uh, <laughs> and the final third is going to be uh, type variance. Uh, how are you? How are you feeling now? Are you sleepy? <laughs> What's your impression? I have to definitely rewatch this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah re rewatching the like, Google. <laughs> yes, stuff. yes, yes. That's uh, that's what you are intended to do. Actually, yes. You cannot just. I understand that uh, this thing cannot be understood uh, in the, from the first iteration. Actually, yeah, you just cannot understand it. And I fully, uh, fully realize this, but uh, please, you must, <laughs> you must understand this because it's, uh, um, as I told you, is a crucial facility of the language. G generics are very important uh, 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 feature and you must deeply understand this if you want to pass uh, 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 job interviews 
job interviewers, they like uh, asking questions about genetics. And you must understand genetics to write uh, your own code correctly. So yes, this is a very, very important one. So yeah, please rewatch, please rewatch in, it in Russian. Uh, if you know Russian, please uh, uh, look, uh, look at slides. So yes, please do. Okay. I also need to, to write the code. Yeah, 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 yeah. You also I'll need to practice. these out actually since, uh, uh, yeah, it's pretty complicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to 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 to, to try uh, to try these examples. Yes, uh, from from slides, just copy paste into to IntelliJ IDEA. See what happens. Where where it won't compile, the, where it will compile, where it will execute, where it will yield the runtime exception. So yeah, it's also good practice to just uh, try try to do it yourself. Not everything we can do during our lectures and labs actually. Uh, we are very short of time, very short of time, and still many things to learn. So let me just uh, tell you the final third of this uh, lecture about type variants. So be prepared just after this short break, and then we'll have a, a real break. Uh, <laughs> so just hold on. Okay, type variants. It's uh, if, if uh, generics is a crucial feature, it's very important feature of language, then type variance is the most important uh, feature, but often overlooked by, uh, by junior uh, developers, by junior engineers. It's, but it's a very important feature of generics themselves. Okay, uh, again, let me speak about some differences between uh, arrays and generics. Uh, here we have an array. Uh, say uh, array of employee and array of manager. In Java, since employee is a super type of manager, manager is subtype, employee is super type because each manager is of course employee of the company, but not uh, each employee is manager. I think it makes sense. So uh, from the point of view of, uh, of arrays, each uh, manager array, each uh, array of managers is also array of employee. You can assign it safely in uh, your code. So <clears throat> uh, we can say it's uh, just a bit scientific, tricky word called covariance. covariance. Uh, we can say that uh, just to, to, to I don't know, to, to look scientific, we can say uh, arrays are covariant. So array types are covariant in, uh, in a way that you can assign uh, uh, array of managers to array of employees and this will, this will work in runtime, in, in compile time for Java. So you can uh, write uh, man, array of managers, you can uh, 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 assign uh, this to array of managers to uh, array of employees and it's okay because if we are getting getting values from this array it will be cast to employees but it's okay for uh, during runtime but if during runtime you are going to insert some lowly employee not manager to e this will work in compile time because uh, it's array of employees from the point of view of compiler, right? So this will work in compile time, but it will cause a uh, runtime exception because arrays, another scientific word is uh, reified in Java. Arrays know all the, everything about uh, types of its elements. So it knows that it's going to be actually an array of managers. And if we are going to add some lowly employee to, to manager array, we will get array store exception in runtime, array store exception. This is not the best way, but uh, at least it's a fine way because throw earlier. That, yeah, remember this throw early rule. As, as soon as we are realized that we are doing something wrong, we realize that we are going to put lowly employee to, to array of managers, it will throw an exception. But this was in the very first uh, version of Java before the invention of uh, uh, of generics, this was just the best thing that they could do. But uh, uh, it also seemed quite uh, uh, 
quite handy to be able to uh, assign uh, array of managers to the variable type as array of employee, of course. When we are talking about lists, list of employee and list of manager, uh, another scientific word, they are invariant uh, because they are not related by inheritance. If we have list of managers uh, and we just want to assign a list of managers to a list of employee, this code just won't compile. This just won't compile. Java just won't let you do this. Why? Because uh, you will just lose information. You just, uh, if you just assign it to list of employee, then, uh, then what? Then uh, later in your code, you will be able to add lowly employee to such a list. So you will just break, uh, break uh, type checking. So uh, Java won't let you do this. And this is quite not, uh, this is not very convenient, right? Because sometimes from, from a certain point of view, a uh, list, uh, list of manager is still list of employee as soon as we are going only to get uh, elements out of this list, right? So we're just getting employees out of this list. So why not assign? In Java, you cannot do this. In Kotlin, by the way, in Kotlin, you can do this because in Kotlin, uh, generics are a bit more complex than in Java, but we're not talking about Kotlin. We're talking about Java. So in Java, you just cannot assign and this, this will not compile. Okay. Uh, so the real picture behind this uh, list of employee and list of uh, manager is like this. So uh, both array list of manager and the list, array list of employee, they can be assigned to some row, row type variable, but you cannot do this because it cannot be used because it's row types, it's prohibited, but we, you can check it with instance of, you can check a array list of manager that it's instance of array list or array list of employee, check it with instance of array list. And uh, uh, you can reassign it like this because array list implements list. Uh, so you can just uh, type cast uh, array list of manager, a uh, list of manager equals array list of manager. See this parameter and uh, this parameter coincide, so just uh, okay. But it's not very uh, handy, and you you are restricted in the things that you are uh, just want to do. What if we want this? What if we want to write or to write uh, two methods on our list uh, interface or our list uh, class. Say we have list of manager and we have list of employee and uh, we have such class hierarchy. Uh, what if we want to uh, write an add all from method and uh, we want to uh, say employees add all from managers. Look, all the managers are employees. So it's a valid choice to add each and every manager to the list of employees. So we won't be uh, we want to be able to write such method. And we also want to be able to write such method managers add all to employees. Again, uh, manager is an employee, a manager is an employee. So we should be able to, to write such a method that managers add all two employees and uh, just, I don't know, transfer all the elements from one list to another list. But still, we need type checking. So uh, this method, uh, this should compile, but this shouldn't compile. If we are just uh, using managers add all from employees, then uh, this shouldn't compile because uh, not all the employees and managers, we cannot uh, know it for sure in compile time. So uh, please, uh, please don't write code like this. And uh, the same, employees are all to managers also. Uh, not uh, every employer is manager. So we want to write these two methods and we want them to type check, uh, to type check things this way. How can we achieve this? Well, if I ask you to write these methods now, from what you are knowing about uh, what you are know about uh, generics at this point, maybe your first approach 
will be like this one. So let's create a list of E. We know that it's a, uh, it's a generic list, like it's type parameter. And we can use this type parameter here, like add all from list E list. And for each element in this list, let's add an item to, to, to one cell, right? And add all to, we also can write it like list E of uh, some elements and E also here. So we can uh, take elements out of uh, our cells, out of uh, this and uh, add them to list. But unfortunately, and this, uh, this approach, uh, I'm meeting this approach over and over again in real life projects when I'm reviewing uh, uh, pull requests from junior programmers. They are forgetting about type invariants of uh, generics in Java. They are writing code like this and ju they just don't get what's expected because uh, if we write code like this, then only identically typed lists can be copied. As I told you before, uh, uh, list of employee and list of manager, they're just not related. One of them is not a subtype of another. So if you uh, write uh, such code and then you write this, it won't compile. It will compile only if uh, these two lists will be identically uh, parameterized. So you have to do something else. And here, and here, another uh, feature of the language uh, that you must understand, and it's tricky, but you please remember, please at least know that this feature exists. Uh, wildcard type, type, so type variants is uh, coming to rescue. So what we actually want to write is uh, the following. If we are writing this add all from, uh, method. Uh, please take as an argument a list of something that extends e. Look, it looks like uh, it looks like uh, bounded type, right? Uh, because of this extends uh, keyword, but it's not bounded type. If it uh, for bounded types, we would uh, list uh, e extends uh, extends uh, say person, for example. This would be bounded type, but here, here uh, type is uh, already de defined, and in this case, this is an unbounded type. It's already defined, but here uh, we are uh, telling something something different. We are telling that uh, as an argument for this method, we are going to accept a list of something that extends e. It might be e. It may be something that extends e. But what we are getting now, uh, if we have a list of something that extends employee, for example, then list of employee will do and list of manager also will do. Also, list of manager is not a subtype of employee. They both will fit as uh, this parameter. So this, see, these are not related. Of course, manager is a subtype of employee, but it doesn't matter now because both employee is a question mark extends employee and manager is question mark extends employee. So they both will fit here. And uh, what do we have here? Here we have that list of something extends E. This means that when we are going to en enumerate items of this list, we know that they are at least of type E. It might be a subtype of E, right? But we know that they are at least E. So it's safe to write E, just E here. And uh, uh, add item, uh, we ourselves are list of E. So we can add E elements, E typed elements to ourselves. So this is going to, uh, uh, so this is going to compile and this is going to work. And this is uh, going to work the, the way uh, the way we want. It's at all from. So this at all from will compile and work for this case. And this will not compile for this case because uh, it's add uh, managers, it's list of managers and add all from employees and employees is a list of uh, um, uh, employee. 
but employee does not extend uh, manager. See, it's manager who extend employee, but employee does not extend manager. So this will not compile. This is exactly what that we want uh, to do. So this is called wildcard type, but uh, co covariant wildcard type. Another this this scientific word is. Uh, uh, covariant in a way that uh, if a manager is a subtype of uh, employee, then list of manager will do as a substitution for list of employee. Okay, uh, just uh, questions for you uh, to, to check that you understand everything co correctly. So uh, let's we have uh, such a parameter of variable uh, that, uh, that is typed in this way. Uh, question mark extends e list. So it's understandable that uh, uh, if we are going to get an element of this list, we can treat it as e because it's something that extends e, right? Okay. Uh, so uh, let uh, 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 let's assume that we have uh, this uh, e two variable that is typed as e. And then we are going to just write list dot add e2, and it won't compile. Any ideas why it's not going to compile? So this is this is a crucial, uh, the important question. If you answer this question now, then you understand what wildcard are, wildcard types are. So any ideas why? This is going to compile, and that why this is not going to compile. Oh, everyone is silent. <laughs> so maybe maybe stupid ideas. Just just maybe. Uh, come on, Mark. Just unmute and say something. Your ideas. <laughs> uh. I'm not sure really. Okay, uh, let's let's just try to, to think it out just uh, out loud. Uh, uh, do you understand why this works? Uh, only because I used it before. <laughs> only because you used it before. Okay, you have list question mark stands E. So uh, this is a list of something. We don't know of what it might be. Uh, some if e uh, is employee or if e is person then it might be a list of persons or list of managers right mm -hmm. or just list of employees so anything that is equal to e or is more specific type than e, right okay. so we are getting values from this list getting values so that we are know that if it extends this value right then it can be what safely cast to e so, so if it's uh, we don't know if it's it it's might be manager it might be we don't know the president of the company we don't know who, who it's going to be but as soon as uh, uh, it extends our e our person we can cast it to person ceo is still person so we can cast it safely okay then why uh, we cannot uh, then we know that E2 is for sure E, is a person. Why this cannot compile? While compiler will tell us, no, 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 you cannot do this. You don't have right to, to use this as an argument of uh, add method. Maybe Why? it could be different from this question mark, I think. Uh, in what, in, different in what way? We know that we just erased this uh, uh, presidents, uh, this uh, managers, this, uh, I don't know, cleaners and programmers to just person, right? And we know for sure that this is person. So can we add them to list safely? Can I say something? Yeah? Yeah, um, unlike the first case where we assigned uh, E1 uh, to, and we did list of gets, you know, it's an object and it can contain uh, maybe employee, persons, manager. But in the sec but in the second case, uh, uh, you we 
we did not specify what exactly uh, we are actually getting if it is person's manager. So here in the list dot add to, so what exactly are we adding? You're not specifying, you're not actually saying anything. That's what yeah, we, just... we know that we know that it's person, but it's not enough. Yeah, this yeah. list yeah. might be a list of, uh, of managers mm. and the compiler just don't know if it's a list of managers or a list of persons or a list of uh, whoever. We just know that it's list of something that extends e. Let's uh, let's uh, do it. Uh, put it simply, e so, person. So it's actually like uh, uh, we are adding like something that can be more narrow. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We are uh, not. We are adding something more wide to the list or, of uh, of uh, something that can be more so, narrow. Yes. Yeah. We're adding something that can be more wide to the list that, uh, of uh, something that can be more narrow. And in this context, compiler just can, cannot be sure that it's correct. So this- So it's like, uh, so in like in real life, like uh, we uh, presume we have a list of like CEO or like managers. Mm -hmm. And in this, uh, like won't compile, uh, we add in some, like cleaning manager who has just one like responsibility for, yeah, yeah, for yeah, cleaning yeah. The, the floor and we cannot add it to those guys who have like a lot of responsibility yes yes exactly okay, it's this might be at this point it might be cleaner you know we're not for sure that it's cleaner because it's just e just person it's just a random person it might be cleaner it might be ceo but compiler just cannot be sure and uh, thus it won't compile so yeah, I think we got it. And I think now that we got it, that this will compile because now in Java will fit uh, all, all the time <laughs> because can, we can assign now to, to manager variable, we can assign to, to person variable. So we can add nulls here. And uh, unfortunately, because it's uh, poor null safety in the language, but uh, uh, anyway, uh, technically we can add null, but we cannot, add something non-trivial here. So we just, uh, okay, uh, conclusion. If we have list uh, question marks extends E, we can get elements from this list, but we cannot put anything useful to this list except on the null. So if we have this extends, we can uh, consume elements or use this uh, object as producer. Please remember this. So okay. can we somehow specify like, okay, so there is uh, some, uh, like, can we add, okay, what is the solution of this problem? How yeah, that's, be... yeah, 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 the solution is on the slide, next slide. <laughs> Great question, the solution is on the next slide. Okay, we are managed to write this add all from method like we wanted to, right? Right, but what about add all uh, to method? Because add all to implies that we want to add something to 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 a list, right? And uh, uh, as we figured out, if we are using uh, this uh, wildcard uh, question mark extends something, this will not work. We cannot add uh, things to to quest to list of question marks extends something. Uh, for this case, we have. Uh, which is called uh, the thing which is called contravariant types. Contravariant types is about uh, putting stuff. If uh, covariant types is about getting stuff, contravariant type is about putting stuff. And uh, here we can write it as following list of something super E. And super is another keyword, is another Java keyword actually. And uh, this actually means that any uh, that uh, for, for, for this uh, for this method, the list of uh, e will fit, and list of everything that is a, a super class of e, including object, will fit. Uh, for example, uh, uh, if we have a, a list of employee, we can add all its elements to list of employee and to list of person because employee is a person. And also we can add all of its element to a list of object because uh, employee and person, they, they are objects. So we are using this syntax here con or contravariant types like uh, question marks, super E, and this will work as expected. So if we have uh, like this variable, question marks, super E list, 
And uh, we can uh, add, if we have a, a variable from just from the previous example typed E, we can surely add this E to this uh, list question mark super E because it's going to be list of E or list of something wider than E. Like uh, if we have question mark extends E, it's either list of E or list of something nar more narrow than E. And, and here we have list of either E or something wider than E. So we can surely add. But when, we, uh, when we're getting stuff from this list, we, we can get, it will compile, we can get, but uh, the only thing that we know about the type of E2 is that it's just object. Actually, we, uh, at, uh, at compile time, we don't know this type, its type, it's just object because uh, uh, this question mark might, might be as, wide as object itself so it's going to be cast to object so uh we can also write it like this list of uh, question mark it's the same as list of uh, question mark extends object so uh we can read elements from this list but they are cast to object of course uh and we can put only nulls to to this list please mind this is this is one of the maybe favorite questions that job interviews about wildcats you have list of question mark what can you read from it what can you put to it and uh please remember this simple mnemonic rule pex 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 producer extends consumer super so extends is about producing stuff or getting stuff from things consumer is about putting or pushing stuff to to elements so uh for example uh this uh, this one is uh, uh just a, a static uh, method from java library that uh, uh finds a maximum element in the collection so it have it has such a declaration like collection of something that extends t and a comparator, a comparator of something that's super t. This means that you can uh, use a, a list of integer and you can list, uh, use a, com a comparator that can compare numbers. If it can compare numbers, that it can compare integers, right? So that this uh, uh, maximum uh, uh, method will compile and work as uh, as intended and uh, we can use uh, like a uh, list of string here and we can use comparator that is able to compare objects if it can compare object that it can surely can compare strings so uh, this will also uh, uh, compile and it will uh, uh, return string here and here it will return integer so uh, here is uh, the cases where type inference in java works and works well okay so please remember the specs rule and uh, uh, use it and utilize it of course you have you need some time just to, to think it through okay uh, okay okay wild card, card capture let me just don't waste time on it we have some recursive generics, also some trickier stuff, but let's just let's just postpone it. <laughs> and uh, we have more tricky stuff like this one, but this is just uh, for you to to be scared of how how tricky things can can we can do. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm looking right now for comments for your uh, in YouTube for your elections. And people be like, uh, a bit hard. <laughs> Examples are just rude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's not, let's uh, even not look at this. Uh, but uh, uh, please remember this one. Yes, this one you should remember for once and for all for the rest of your life in Java. Producer extends consumer super. And let's have uh, uh, let's have a break until until 12, uh, 12 o'clock. Uh, for